Hey guys, hope you're doing well today. Today we're gonna dive back into ProPresenter and we're gonna talk about creating themes. In the last video, I did a quick overview of ProPresenter 7, which you can watch up here. And I talked about some of the things that were really useful to us when we upgraded last year. Our church didn't do live streaming pre-March when everything went down. But in June, when we started being able to meet finally again, outdoors at the high school where our portable church meets, we started live streaming. Well, in the previous versions of ProPresenter, that would have involved having multiple modules and multiple computers to be able to run some separate looks so that our live stream would get one thing and our main screens would get another. Well, within ProPresenter 7, you can do that all in one place. So I'm gonna talk about today creating those themes. ProPresenter uses those themes to make your looks look how they need to look to go out to the various places. So I have one theme set up to go one place, another theme set up to go another place, so that things look the way that I need them to look. So I've actually created several different ones that ProPresenter pulls whenever I set up the audience looks. I'll talk about audience looks and setting up your screens in another one, but right now I just wanna talk about how we create those themes. So let's dive into the computer and we'll get right to it. Let's go into our song, one of our songs that we're gonna be playing this coming weekend. There's the nameplate. This is how things look when you look at our main TVs up next to the stage and what our live audience will see. But on our live stream, if we go there, we get the nameplate look. This is what it looks like on the live stream. And then our Sling Studio will key out all of this green so you get the video over top of that. So that is our nameplate theme that I have created. This is our worship theme. So this is another theme that is created to look this way so that on the live stream, it gets this look to it for all of our song slides as you go through them. On our main output, this is what it looks like here. So which this is also a theme that I've created so that I can make all of our songs look the same. I will just select this theme when I'm going to create a new song and it pulls it in this way. So I have several different themes set up. If we go into our welcome and announcements, once again, you can see that our uh, nameplate slide, now this one here will look like that there and like that there with the nameplate lower third for that theme. If we go into our message slides, I have a few different themes set up for our message slides. So this slide right here is set up with a quote theme or how, however I've chosen to name them. But during the message, if our pastor is sharing a quote from another uh, speaker or writer, it'll come up this way. So on our main screen, let's go to that. On our main output, it'll look like this. So it comes up in this area here. I have it italicized, got our quotes, and then the references down here. So on our live stream output, It'll put the quote up here and it'll populate the reference down here. Same thing with a scripture slide. If we go in, it puts the actual scripture here and then the reference down here. And this is a point slide. So if our pastor makes a particular point, you can see right here what it looks like on our main screens. And this is what it'll look like on the live stream feed whenever he uses Greek that he's talking about so that it gets the right coding and everything like that. I have a different font used for that than I do any of our other stuff. So scripture will look like that. And then we also have one for pictures. It just sends out the same thing over top of both places. But these are all different themes that have been created. So let's go in and let's go ahead and create another theme. To do that, we click on the more button here and we go into theme editor. Now I have several different things created. Right now we're in our my message lower third themes and let's go, we can look at our worship. So this is my worship, main worship theme here. So this is our main one that I use most of the time. It's just a simple uh, text box that has the, a font that I like. I like to use bold and white and all capital um, so that it shows up really well on our 70 inch TVs that are up at the front. Here's another one that I've created that has the same type of thing going on to it. It's a different font, but still bold and will be uh, nice and strong on the screen. But I've also put a shape in the background just across the center here so that if we had a lighter background, a lighter moving background, 
uh, this text box would show up a little better with a little bit of a black opacity behind it to help set it off a little bit. So let's create another one. To create another one right here within this window here, so this will all show up in my worship themes, I'll click the plus sign and it creates another slide here. So then I can go in and I can make any changes to this I want to. Uh, some things have moved around if you were in ProPresenter 6. Uh, it took me a minute to find where my capital capitalization things and some of that stuff is, but you've got this little gear here. Most of your main things that you would use, which are bold, italics, and underline, are right here, pretty easily accessible. But then if you click on the gear, you can get to some of the other pieces going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this all caps like I would normally do. Let's pick a different font just for sake of doing it. We're gonna pick something kind of funky. Why not Kelvinized? I would obviously never use that font for any of our slides going up. Let's change our size to be, let's go with 200, see how that looks. It's massive. Let's change it to 100 and see how that goes. So that font's kind of weird. It's cutting off kind of funky. Let's go with something a little bit more normal and hope that that works better. So, um, so that's really simple. If I wanted to add anything else to it, to add a shape, you click on the plus sign within the window here. This plus sign will add another slide. This plus sign is where you get your other pieces. So let's add that rectangle. And it comes in that blue, we'll drag it out this way, and we'll drag it out this way. And sure, that'll work. Let's drag it so it centers up. So now we've got a blue box there, but it's blocking our text. To reorganize things, you come into this objects window down here. I can just click on the rectangle and drag it below. And then uh, there we've got a really simple, I would never really use this for worship or anything like that, but I've got a, a simple other uh, theme there that's been set up that now I can use for various things. Here we go with our lower third. This is our main one that we use here where it's just got our text box with the font that's selected and our size and like I said, all capital, nice and bold font. And then I have a, a full 100% opacity box behind it. And then within the screens, when I show you how to set that up, uh, all of this then becomes green behind it and that's what get key, gets keyed out. And you once again see here in the object. So if I wanted to add, another slide, here's another one that I created. I'll use this one, obviously I wouldn't use purple, but let's say I wanted to add another text box on this. Just click that text button and then let's drag it around. Let's say I wanted to stick that, that down here. So let's say this was a scripture slide, which I'll get into that one here in a moment. Then I've got that there and you can see it's created another box. ProPresenter will automatically create these names just as it goes through. So this one says text text because that basic one says text text there. And within these themes, once I put in my slides on my main screen, it pulls in the information and sticks it in these places. Now there's something important to know that I will show you as we go and look at our message lower thirds. If we look here, on this one, this is our lower third for just a regular point that we're making. So we've got our background here, and then we've got our slide here that just says text. But let's go and look at one of them for scripture. You see that I've changed these names, and that's really important because ProPresenter sometimes doesn't know where to put certain things because it auto creates the names that just say text. These originally both came in just saying text because it's a text box that's going in there. So let's go back to our main screen here and go into our message slides. If I were to click on scripture and both of these were just named text, it may think to itself, let me just stick this one in as the scripture verse here versus being where it needs to be down here. So if I go in and edit this slide, you can see that this box here, now selected blue, is the one that's called scripture. And I have named this box scripture and I've named this box reference. So now if you look at the lower thirds, let's go back to our theme editor. In the lower thirds, it now references these two titles and we'll pull in our scripture into this box 
and our reference into this one. So if you have multiple sets of something that need to pull the correct information, make sure you name it appropriately. So within my theme for my lower third, this text box is named as scripture, and this text box is named as reference. And then on my main slide, the same pieces that will coordinate with these are named scripture and reference. That helps ProPresenter know where it's gonna pull things into the right place. Let's go look at our name plate slide and you'll see the same thing. This box here, this one down here is named title. This box is, let me click on it, there we go. This box is named name. So let's go back and let's look at our slide here. If we go in and edit my name plate, you see that name is name name and then my title there is title so that pro presenter pulls those into the correct places so that's how this is how we have these set up to work and then once you select the right audience look to pull in the different themes to the right places it automatically creates this one so when i'm creating these slides i'm just creating our main screen here and then I've used those themes so that now when I click on a slide here, so the live stream output knows to pull the theme for this point and makes the text look this way and pulls it over that way every time. And if I have a scripture slide, I'm just creating this, this scripture slide and then ProPresenter pulls the theme for this look to look this way for our live stream output. So making sure those pieces are set up appropriately is really important so that things go to the right places. We'll talk about how to set up the looks and how things go out in the next video. So it's pretty simple to go in and create those. You, like you have ultimate flexibility just like you would with a normal slide. You can make them look however you want them to. Uh, play around with things. Obviously, I've kept my stuff pretty clean and minimal just so it's easy to read on our main screens, which right now are in outdoor sunlight a lot of times. I keep those really simple so it's really clean and easy to read. I don't tend to do anything more than two lines of text if I can for these bigger points. Obviously, scripture will flow out a little bit bigger than that as well, but I try to keep things as minimal as possible. In any of our worship, all of our worship is always only two lines of text, whether it be on our live stream output or our main output. I have these set up to always look this way so it's super clean and minimal, easy to read up on the main screens is the point there. So you can go ahead and go in and play around with these, create your own themes, and in the next video I'll get into how to set up your audience looks and your screens to export these out to your various places. I hope this was helpful to you. Do all the things that YouTube tells you to do. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when I drop another video. I'm not trying to grow a YouTube channel. I'm just trying to help as many people as I can with the things that I have learned. So I hope this helped you and we'll see you guys next time.